you had that one. This is a little information about who he was together, who we are, and everything. Okay. Hey, how are you all doing today? Oh. Good morning, Jack. You said? Jack, yeah. Welcome, Jack. I'm Pastor Bob Tarasia. Good morning. Thank you for information. It's a handout. It's got the uh, words for the song, praise time. It's got the scripture reading, the message text, and information for tithes and offering. There's an offering box and things like that. All this stuff. We'll go over that. But anyway, we're going to get started. It is 11 a.m. I like to be punctual. You can get try to be. <laughs> but uh, welcome. My name is Pastor Bob Tarasiak, and I live here as well. Stay a second floor. And it's good to be back. Like I said, I was visiting family, had many different reunions in the New England area. So if my accent comes out, you'll understand I'm from Massachusetts. So and if I speak too fast, just tell me to slow down. I was watching a minister I knew uh, in New Hampshire where I first got ordained. And, and I realized, wow, I really slowed down compared to how he speaks and preaches. He's very fast like that. So you guys know what I'm saying? And, and he, he's like, that's the way I used to speak was that fast. And I remember coming to... After leaving Honduras, the mission field for three years, and I was in Ohio here up in Ashtabula County, and people, would you would you slow down? We can't keep up. And I said, slow down. I've already slowed down. And then I went to Kentucky, and he said, you really need to slow down because you know where they draw and they don't talk too fast down there. And boy, I, said, I really had to slow down because they could not keep up with me. So I've come a long way in 24 years Thank since I've been. Uh -huh. I'm trying more. So. If Try to keep things at a good pace. All right. <laughs> Not 120 beats per minute, but more like 75. And they do musical things. So anyway, I just, uh, we're going to start it. Uh, Pastor Bob Teresi, I just said I was gone a week, and I don't know what you did Sunday. I wasn't here, but anyway, uh, it was nice to get away, for especially my wife, Mariana, who works at Sam's Club here. And uh, so I was good for a week off for her as well get away, and uh, almost got killed by a tractor trailer truck in Worcester, an I-290, if you know where that road is oh, and where it's wow. at, um, it's not a good place, but Angels, that was a miracle, I mean, I am no doubt in my mind, not, no doubt at all that there is God who is with us, and if God is for us, who will be against us, it so it's a great thing. So anyway, so we're going to get started, uh, just this you hand out, this is available online, it's on our Facebook page, San Felipe Believers, dot, uh, San Felipe Believers, which is a Facebook page, and also BelieversTogether.org will give you a lot of information. That's on the back of this. But this is the typical handout. This is found online. Like I said, Facebook page and the website we have for Believers Together. The songs are there. And on the back, it gives you the message. The scripture here this morning. The message points. Call this song. And then if you want to have a ties and love offerings, you can be mailed to or dropped off. Or use the box here. Or Zell online electronically. And also prayer and prayer, uh, praise and prayer requests if you have any Praise and prayer requests. We have some cards back there you can fill out for prayer requests. Or you can email me at rtarasiak at gmail.com or knock on my door at 3 in the morning if you're really emergency of prayer or something's going on. Uh, please, uh, you can knock on my door. We had this situation one time where uh, Pat came and knocked at my door and, uh, and there's, there's a situation going on. So, so you're allowed at the audience, so you know, I'm there to serve and help you all. So that's that. That is the handout that will give you a thing. And, and also remember that the uh, scripture reading is on there in the beginning in Romans 8, 28 to 30 this morning. As well as we're going to be starting the new series in Ephesians, the whole book of Ephesians, we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, is regarding the text for our message this morning. And it's the title is Blessing Regarding the Grace of God's Predestined Elect. So we're going to see that in a little bit. And also I included there, and I just included this in the mail room here locally, is um, I'm part of the pastor's association, if you will. They meet first, t second Tuesday of the month at different restaurants. Of course, I'm never there now because I have Bible study at one. I can't really go to them. But they're having, because we know that every year there's a National Day of Prayer in May. It's usually always on the first Thursday of the month. Well, Thursday, May 2nd, is the National Day of Prayer in a Faith Christian Fellowship Church in Beaver Creek in the Beaver Creek Prayer Force is hosting the National Day of Prayer for Beaver Creek, and it's at Faith Christian Fellowship Church, Grange Hall Road, Beaver Creek, Ohio. It'll be Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Um, I'm planning to attend, uh, so, but I put these there over there if you want to grab one, and also I got them in the mail room if you'd like to consider that. So truly, I've always participated one way or another throughout the years for the National Day of Prayer. 
And so, again, I, our country needs prayer. We need prayer. Uh, the president needs prayer, a lot of prayer. Uh, we, we all need prayer. And so it's important that uh, we talk to our Lord. So that's, you can take one of with you. In high school, their high school had that celebrated National Day of Prayer, and they prayed around the Bible. Right, they do that in high school, right? Very few of them do that anymore, but that's a blessing. That's a huge praise right. that they're doing that. And they, even if they, they hope that you can announce it at the church, that's another important thing. So I like about the Good News Club, the uh, Children's Evangelism Fellowship, their Good News Club, and I always participated in them in previous uh, positions, Pastor Rose, where half the school in the grandma's grandma schools, uh, we would use the cafeteria or the gymnasium, and we were allowed to use the building by, by, by the you know, the rights of the law, uh, equal usage laws. And uh, so we would have this child event. felt like we have this good news club after school. People could, children could be staying there with parents. And we would present the gospel based on song and games and things. So really nice. And of course, we know children, when they're very young, they receive the gospel quite more frequently. Or at a, they're very ready to receive it versus after the age of 18, it drops really low. Uh, young children, typically, it's very high, the percentage, they come to Christ uh, very young, but as it says, we get older, we get more stubborn, I think, so, good morning, welcome. So, welcome y'all here, we're glad we're going to get started, and uh, we're going to first start off with, uh, oh, also, don't forget the uh, Bible studies, we have Bible study here, locally, at 4 p.m., every Tuesday and Thursday, right here, and also online, I have it through Believers Together, we got people over the world live video streaming online on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. And that's in your, your handout as well that you know. And you can get information and how to uh, hook up there with your computer or laptop or even iPhone. You can get on and interact with the questions we have. Well, right now we're going through verse by verse through the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Uh, I think it's Tuesdays it's the book of Revelation and Thursdays we're in Daniel because they kind of tie together with the end times, and I really believe we're getting close to the Ezekiel chapter 38 war that's happening, that may potentially happen with Iran and with Israel and the things that are going on right now in the world. These, we are looking in the last days here, I believe, and I believe the Harpezo, which is the rapture, may be coming soon, any day. So we're getting close, so I think we're gonna keep our candles burning, we've gotta be prepared, and we're gonna get ready. So without ado, we're gonna start, and anybody would like to volunteer to Say the prayer, uh, welcoming prayer, and and also the, the scripture reading. Ephesians, excuse me, uh, Romans eight twenty eight to thirty. Okay, hey, Kathy, go ahead, please. The Father, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for just being able to praise you and show your love to everyone we meet. Thank you for just all of our family and our friends, just taking care of them, just as well as you take care of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Mm -hmm. And then in Romans 8, it starts out in 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestinated, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen. So that's a scripture reading. I was supposed to always scripture reading. The scripture always typically get a scripture reading that ties in with the message. On, uh, of course, we're going to predestination and things of that nature, so in God's blessings. So we're going to first start a song, it's called How Great Is Our God, it's on your handout, it's the first song on the first page, the front page, and you can follow the words if you know, and gladly sing along with me, so let's sing, How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King. Is born. 
you have your Bibles, great. If you have an app on your phone, even better, whatever you've got. But that's where we're going to be today in a sermon text. So as an introduction, when it comes to blessings, it comes to predestination and the things of God, we have to remember that just as we are today here, we are limited by human, by our nature, it's limited by time, space, and matter. We cannot change time. In the space we are, God created the space we're in, and matter was the same thing. Every material, every kind of, down to the atom, to the nucleus, to a protein in our bodies, it's all designed by God. And we can't change them, if you will. Uh, that's part of our DNA, part of our nature of the God's created. But yet God, who is far above all this, you know, we sometimes in the Bible says He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, but actually God was there in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, our triune God was there before all this started, before even the earth was created, the universe, the galaxies all around us. He designed it all. He spoke these things into existence. And we know that as John chapter 4, Jesus said that we worship God as spirit, and we worship God in spirit and in truth. And so that's very important. So, so we're going to look at today in the importance of these blessings that Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesians on one of his places where he was planted at Ephesus Church on his journeys. There was three missionary journeys he went on after he was changed, transformed from Saul, the religious leader of the, of the Pharisees, to Paul, who became a born-again you know, Christian by the road to Damascus, when Jesus knocked him off his high horse, if you will, literally, and came and seen the light, literally, and of course it transformed him from Saul to Paul, and he was just one of the greatest missionaries and apostles we've, we've seen, and he wrote two-thirds, pretty much, of the whole New Testament. And so we're going to read now together in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, his opening remarks of, and these blessings that he's given us and some of, the, some of the aspects of those blessings. So here, this is God's holy word, Ephesians 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons, of course, and daughters, through Jesus Christ, according to who? The purpose of His will. To the praise, of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, grace which he lavished upon us, and our wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Let us pray, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the privilege of having this Bible in front of us in the word of God. And Father, help us this morning to gain insight with the renewing and transforming of our minds. Uh, touch our hearts, convict us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And Father, help us to understand and gain knowledge of your word this morning. And Father, use me to speak as an oracle of God. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Point one is this, it's on your handout. Believers are blessed to be the Lord's chosen. Believers are blessed, highly blessed in the Lord's chosen. First of all, Paul reveals his call here in the beginning to, an, to the apostle role, the apostle of Christ. And he says there, not by his will, but by whose will? God's will. We're going to see that a lot through this chapter 1 in a lot of where it talks about, it's about he did this, God did this. It's not about mankind. All in his sovereign state, the sovereignty of God, and his elect, and his choosing, his predestination of the saints who we are as believers, he establishes our righteousness. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is all things. And that's why we always play even in the, the example of to how to pray the Lord Jesus said, Thy will be done, his will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So Paul was lost in this religion of man-made Judaism, well, not man-made, but Judaism, which was a, a works-based salvation. They have to go bring the bulls, the goats, the rams, the peace offering, the, the, the sin offering, and go to the high priest, and they go sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest 
could go in there and hit a rope on his leg in case he went out there when I was and cleaned or purified, all this ritualistic religious stuff that they had to do. And then they, he would go out and sure enough, you know, lust after a woman, commit adultery in his heart or steal or by accident or whatever it is and gets, oops, you know, I killed God again. I got to go make another sacrifice. It was a continual process of a religious system that never could appease God. And so Paul here, talking about these blessing Lord chosen, he, he was a man transformed into this religious, not a religious system, but out of that to a relationship with the Lord God on high. And so again, Paul writes to the saints in Ephesus, and I want to share, you know, something that not the saint of a, for example, the Roman Catholic, he deems somebody a saint through a tribunal and all this. Anybody who's born again, who has trusted in Jesus Christ, guess what? You're a saint. Oh, but pastors, no, well, I'm a saint. No, no, according to the Bible definition, you are. What is a saint? The word in Greek is agios. It means you're set apart, you deem holy, righteous by the righteousness of Jesus. By his work on the cross, by his gift, God's grace, we are deemed saints of the Most High God. Now, doesn't that mean, doesn't mean we're still not sinners. We are sinners, but yet we're still we're saints, deemed by his work, by his precious blood that was shed, which paid for all sin, past, present, and future sin. Now, does that mean and give us a license to sin? No, Apostle Paul talks about that in other areas in his letters. But the key is we have fruit. We have fruit of the Holy Spirit that reveal that we are born from above. Born to a new state, if you will. The old man has passed away. We've been created anew in Christ. And because of that, we our outlook, our eyes are open. We're not spiritually blind no more, but we can see the truth. And this is what Apostle Paul is talking about when he says that we are saints set apart. These are called these chosen, justified by grace, through faith, and we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. We'll see that next week. So, so the saints are faithful to God through what? Through the power of Christ's Holy Spirit. Not by our works. We have a battle going on, right? Our, our, our soul, our, our body, the flesh of us, the weakness of our nature, human nature, wants to do evil things, wants to do bad things. The heart is wicked. Who can know it, Jeremiah said. But, but the Holy Spirit leading, we don't want to have the desires of the flesh. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability and convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So we can overcome those desires and lead a holy life in sanctification. That is being a saint Word sanctified it means we continue to grow. We're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. But guess who picks us up? Jesus, the Lord, our Savior. The Holy Spirit picks us up. Say, hey, Bob. Or, oh, we get off track. They say, Bob, what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be doing that. Or, should, you, you know, you, you're going off a little bit. Get back focused. Get focused. And that's the Holy Spirit of God who focuses us, refocuses us to look to the cross, to look to Him for, for the guidance and leading of our lives. And so Paul writes regarding this wonderful grace and peace bestowed upon the saints in Ephesus. And he talks about that the Lord has chosen us before time was even established. Whoa, how can that be, Pastor Bob? That's, that's insane. But yet, I said it before, God's not limited by time, space, and matter. He is, knows all things. There's not a bird that falls to the ground that he does not know about. He knows it all. He sees all. He is beyond even our own human cranial cavity capacity of our brains. You know, I think we have, we use so much a little percentage of our brains, but yet God is beyond all kinds of human intelligence and wisdom that's beyond we can even imagine what he's done through his creation power. The evidence is clearly all around us. That for men are without excuse to see that there hasn't been a designer, a creator of all this world. And so the Lord has chosen us before time was established. And as believers, believers are blessed to be the Lord's chosen as the saints as defined biblically. So we look at verse 3. Blessed to be the God and Father of Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every what? Spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Focus of Paul is blessings that what? Originate from God in heaven. And re in return, believers are blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing. We, we see that, you know, the blessings of God, God, we bless God. Oh, bless God, bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But yet, when, as they often say, was, as prayers go up, the blessings come down, right? When we pray to the Lord, we talk to the Lord. And guess what? We allow the Lord to speak to us, too. That's when those quiet times, when we allow the Lord to speak to us through the Word of God. Wonderful thing to know. And so here, the focus of Paul is blessing that originate from God. In return, we receive those spiritual blessings. And remember this, notice that this is not really any earthly or material blessings, 
But heavenly spiritual blessings, and notice this is for only God's elect, those predestined, whom the Lord has drawn and chosen to the truth. John 6, 44, unless the Father draws you, he will have no part of you. God draws those, those people, opens their eyes, because remember, mankind, in our sin nature, we don't want God. We, we, we want earthly things. We want earthly riches. You know, earthly wisdom is to be successful in money and have all those riches on earth and material stuff and stuff, 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 and all kinds of things. But what, what is it all if you can't take it with you? I've never seen a, you know, U-Haul behind a hearse, have you? So, you know, so the key is, you know, we, we, when we go, we come in the world naked, we're going to go out naked. And, we, we, and we're going to stay to the judgment seat of the Lord. And either God's going to know you through His Son Jesus as our lawyer, our advocate, if you will, or not. And if you don't have Jesus, all that sin times you messed up and screwed up, God's going to see it all and say, hey, you can't come in here. Perfection it can only come into the kingdom of God. And uh, how do we get perfected through Jesus Christ and become saints? So again, notice this is for God's life. And you know, and I was thinking about this, how God has chosen us, those even predestined to come to the Lord as we have decided and called upon the name of God's salvation. I was thinking about... Um, you know, I remember growing up a kid in a local neighborhood, and oftentimes, you know, or, or even high school or schools, you, had, you did, out of a whole, you know, class, right, you get two, two, two leaders, say you're going to have a volleyball game. Well, one would lead this team, one would lead another team, they would choose the guy. And then those two guys, they would look at all the different people, the, the, all the classroom, the students, other things, and they would try to pick out, they had a choice to pick out one guy, they each rotated, you know, you pick one person, and, and the other team captain would pick the other person until they get to the last person. So, so again, that's typically what happens with God as we, we are chosen. He, he picks those, he, you know, he chooses, and that's what his, his will be done. It's just something that, you know, who, who are we to argue with the potter, and we are the clay the Bible talks about, right? He molds and shapes whom he wills. It talks about that also in, in Romans 6, Romans 4, and other areas about things like, in our scripture reading, Romans 8, 29, and 30. So again, God, choosing whom he wills, become part of his team, if you will. His kingdom that is eternal and secure, and on his team, guess what? You always have the victory. Your team's going to win every time. Whose team? The team of Jesus Christ. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Right? He, he's the one that did our Lord. He is sovereign. And we see through this Bringing a scripture about his will to the praise of his glorious grace, to his love, his mercy, and his compassion. He's there for us. Amen. Point two of your handouts. Blessed are God's elect believers who are chosen before time was even created. What if you could now, ahead of time, or a you know, or maybe over a decision that was made for you, what if you could know of the future before you got there? I mean, wouldn't that be great? You know, never mind these psychos, I call them, with their tarot card readers and, and all this other garbage they think. The, the 800 hotline in California, I remember when I was, I would pick up a certain station when I was in Mexico, and you, you could, first minute free, you can learn about your future and all this stuff, and, and they got these, I call them psychos on the line, you know, you're wasting your money, they're going to give you these generalizations and talk about all this stuff, and no, that's not what I'm talking about. God, and before we even knew that, he, he knew, he knew exactly that we would come to Christ because he knew it before the beginning of time. It's an amazing thing. For example, what if you apply for a job, right, and you weren't sure? What if we already knew that you were going to get the job even before you applied for it? Well, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? But again, we don't have that ability or capacity in this human world that we live in. But God, not limited by time, he knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning to the end from the end in our little world of ours. The key here is time. We cannot stop time. How many of us wish we go back maybe 50 years or something years ago and we could change the decision we made? Oh, that would be great, wouldn't it? Some of the mistakes you made through some of the things I've done, I'm like, boy, I wish I could go back to when I was 16. I shouldn't have done that stupid thing. I should have, I should have went and continued playing football instead of working because I really wanted to play pro football, but I didn't. You know, I'm, I regret that, but what am I going to do? I can't change it. I can't go play now. They'd beat me and kill me if I wanted to play now. I'm too old. My bones are brittle. You know, you can't change the past. But God is not limited by that. So we as believers, we are God's elect, 
Because if you're a believer in Christ, that means God drew you, He chose you, you believed it, you called upon the name of salvation, and you were part of His chosen. And this was all determined before time was created. It says in verse 4 of our text, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. And notice again that word predestined in verse 4, and, and that word in the Greek is proiso, proiso. And it is to come to a decision beforehand. It's to decide beforehand, to determine ahead of time, to decide upon or ahead of time. And that's exactly what God did. So Paul is writing to God's predetermined chosen believers, and that letter is, is available for us to say yes. If you're believing in Christ, guess what? God already knew that you were a believer in Christ before even you knew it. Which is amazing. <laughs> because again, he knows all things. And so we see that. And of course, but what is the thing he talks about in that verse? He says, but be holy and blameless before him. That is in the eyes of God before him. And so we see that that's part of it. You know, if you are determined, you predetermined, you are the elect foundation, then what? We should be holy and blameless. Well, how do we become holy? Well, Jesus is blood. He shed his blood, and God doesn't see our sin nature. He sees the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Mohammed can't do that. Buddha can't do that. Uh, Joe Biden can't do that. Oh, my neighbor's dog can't do that. My dog can't do that. Only the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he did it once and for all. His believers, those who trusted him as Lord and Savior. And so we have the privilege of being God's elect, that we should be holy and blameless and for him, and notice in verse 5, Paul explains this. Well, why? He says, because in love, what? He predestined us for adoption, we is, you know, into his kingdom, to himself as sons and daughters, right? Through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. It's not our will, it's his will be done. He willed us for our lives. And again, how did it happen? Through who? Through who to know? Through Jesus alone, not through Muhammad, not through any false prophet, not through, you know, anybody else you can think of. Only, only Jesus Christ. That's all the gospel's about. It's about Jesus, period. No other name that anybody should call upon except the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the key. He alone is the door. He is the root of Jesse, the key of David, and we go only through him, only through the cross. Oprah Winfrey said, oh, you can go through other ways to get to God. Well, not according to my Bible. My Bible says it's only through Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, I guess Oprah's wrong, isn't she? I'll stick what Jesus said. He's, a little more, he's got more validity and credibility in my eyes than Oprah does, okay? Or anybody else. I'll, I'll stick with Jesus. And they wrote this down for me to us to receive it, and we accept it as truth. The Word of God is true. So again, Paul continues to declare through all the blessings given to his elect, being predestined to salvation, Paul here reveals God's grace and given praise for the gift which he has blessed the chosen believer. Look at verse 6. To who? To the praise of His glorious grace, that's this God's favor, right? With which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Isn't it wonderful to know that not only is God and Jesus is the Beloved, but we also have been blessed by what? By this wonderful grace, a gift that we never earn. You know, I was a Roman Catholic for 39 years, and I always thought I had to earn it, I had to do this, I had to do that, I did all these things, and I've got to pay. No, it's a gift. How many of us, you know, if I gave, you know, Floyd, I said, Floyd, I'm going to give you this Bible, and, uh, and it's a gift, right? So here you go, Floyd, this is a gift, right? <laughs> and, and if I, oh, well, that'll be $15. Well, well, that's not a gift. I'm asking for money. That's what those prosperity guys do. No, it's a gift, it's a gift. Human nature says, but I, gotta, I can't get a gift. I, I gotta buy you a bag. Remember Christmas time, someone gives you, oh man, I didn't buy it, but I gotta go buy that person a gift. Because he gave me a gift. Well, that's not the way the person intended in the beginning. I don't, I don't give somebody a gift saying, oh, well, they better give me one back. Well, that's it. They're cut off. No, we don't do that. We do it because we, out of the generosity of our heart. That's what God did by the generosity of his heart, his mercy, and his grace. said, I'm going to send my son, the Lord Jesus, and it's a gift to you. Believe and receive. Repent of our sin. And so believers are chosen saints of the blessed Father, and thus believers share the blessings through grace, the favor of God through Jesus. 
You know, I wanted to share about uh, a little story, a source I don't, as unknown, but this one morning, this R.C. Chapman, he's a devoted Christian, was asked how he was feeling. And he said, uh, I'm burdened this morning. And, but his happy countenance contradicted his words. So the question exclaimed in surprise, was, are you really burdened, Mr. Chapman? He said, yes, but it's a wonderful burden. It's an overabundance of blessing for which I cannot find enough time or words to express my gratitude. And seeing the puzzled look on his face of his friend, Chapman added with a smile, and he said, I'm referring to Psalm 68, verse 19, which fully describes my condition. And in that verse, the Father of Heaven reminds us that he daily loads us with benefits. So sometimes those burdens are actually really blessings in our lives. And it's just a matter of, of how we understand what God is trying to do. And he's blessed us knowing that we have eternal security, that he has predestined us to victory in the Christ, that we have a heavenly home waiting for us. And for those loved ones who passed before us, who love the Lord, who believe, who are God's elect, guess what? We will see them again. Isn't that great to know that? Yes. That is such a, that, that is truly a blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. As part of God's elect, have you received the blessing of the Lord to know you are His? It's a question you can answer. Finally, the third point. Believers are blessed and united in the redemptive power of Christ. Let me say that again. Believers are blessed and united in the redemptive power of Christ. How many of us have been liberated, free from a worldly problem? I know so many people that have come to Christ and seen in my own eyes delivered from, you know, pornography, drug addiction, uh, whatever it may be, you know, whatever it may be, different things, right? Uh, and, and just people have been delivered, they've been liberated, they've been set free, they've been redeemed. You know, uh, how about the freedom from sinful ways? All those things, the desires of the flesh. Well, that's what those believers are so blessed in that redemptive power of the Lord Jesus Christ to be redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. Right? It's a great song. That's what it's about. How about the, you know, it's wonderful. So, so Paul continues in his opening letter to the Ephesus church in his epistle regarding this leading particulars uh, of how Jesus established this, how God predestined like believers and how we have this redeeming, you know, trading, if you will, restoration, restoration. And so in verse 7 it says, in him we have redemption through what? His blood. His blood. The forgiveness of our true sins or trespasses, according to what? To the riches of His grace. Not, it's all, again, you see more and more, it's in Him, in His, 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 His ways, His will, His predestiny, His things. It's all about the sovereignty of God. Redemption, that word means to be restored, to be traded in. And the, and the Greek word is apolitrosis. It's to release or set free redemption with the implied analogy to the process of freeing a slave to be set free, to liberate it, to be delivered, a deliverance. And so that's what he's talking about when he says we have this freedom, we have this liberation through what? Through his blood. We've been redeemed. Only through the blood of Christ is there any forgiveness of our sins or trespasses through what? Through the grace or favor of God, through his son, and of course the riches of the Lord's grace as he's talking about. Well, how can these spiritual blessings occur? Well, God made it to the believers to know the mystery of His will by giving us revelation insight regarding His purpose, which was accomplished through Jesus Christ. And we see that in verse 8 and 9 of our text. Which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, what? making what? Known to us the mystery of whose will? His will. According to whose purpose? His purpose, which He set forth in who? In Christ. That's the key. All these blessings, all these things that we've been lavished, we've been just loved upon us in all wisdom and insight. Without God, how do we have any wisdom and insight of anything about the Creator or anything? We have nothing. We've got this world around us where everyone's out for themselves. Um, you know, me, 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 I, I, I. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Well, in God's kingdom, it's what's in it for the Lord. We become humbled as children of God and we have become Slaves, we have been bought with a price. And because of that, we have been redeemed. That's the redeemer that we talked about, that, 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 uh, 
as a process of freeing a slave, now we have become a slave of righteousness rather than a slave of sin. Sin wants to overpower us, overwhelm us. We, we're tempted every day by sometimes of some of us. It is difficult. As a pastor, I had been, been so attacked by Satan and demons and people trying to, to uh, force me into a situation or to tempt me, and, and I have to pray. I have, I have to look to the Lord. I need your help. I need to overcome. We need to overcome the desires of the flesh, which are weak. And how do we do that? Through prayer, through the power of God's word, and by, by leaning, not on my own understanding, but leaning on the word of God and looking to the Lord, the author and finisher of my faith, who carries me, who brings me through those times when I, I can't walk on my own, but I've got the Lord to carry me. And when there's only one set of footprints in the sand, and he's got me, he's got us. And that's important. Well, what is the ultimate goal of the Lord in this third point? Look at verse 10. As a plan for the fullness of time, right? Coming together to what? To unite all things in Him. Things in heaven and things on earth. When we meet the Lord, you're going to be there. And then later, after the uh, t -t 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 tribulation period, the great tribulation, and then the millennial reign, the banquet in heaven, where they have the marriage supper, where the Lamb of God, the, the bridegroom, is going to be with the bride, the church. And is it going to be a huge united banquet that we all come together, a great reunion with the Lord. Wow, talk about reunions. It's going to be great to know that Lord is Lord in Jesus. He loves us like a brother, like a sister. He cares for us as a shepherd, and we are the sheep. And the sheep hear his voice, and he knows calling him. And so we, we, we turn to him. And we know that we're going to have this beautiful paradise of heaven. We're going to live with him. There's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. This earth will be gone. And we new heaven, new earth. And we will live forever and ever in eternity with him. Just by receiving a gift. And only God, through his opening of our eyes, he already knew this before the beginning of time, who would be his. He knows who is his. And he knows he's called us. And we heard the call. He's drawn us. He opened their eyes. And here we are, right here in the year of our Lord, April 20th, you know, 2024. And this, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe you're here for a reason. And we're here because God has given us a purpose in our lives. He has given us gifts. He's given us blessings in our lives. And every day we ought to be on our knees and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that we're just passing through this world. And there's something greater beyond this. The kingdom of God is forever. It's eternal. I'd rather go there than go to hell. You know, I ask people who are atheists to be, I mean, think about it. I said, look, it, it, it doesn't hurt you anything. It doesn't cost you anything. It's the greatest life insurance policy in the world. And guess what? We don't pay for it. It's been paid in full by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. What's so hard to believe in something like that? I'm not willing to take a chance with my soul. To say, oh no, there's no God, there's no Christ. I don't see him, I don't believe him. I'll be like dying Thomas. Or, if I don't see him, that's it. I, I don't think he's alive. He didn't resurrect from the grave. Well, God also said that blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. That's us. It's Gentiles. We have been grafted in together, reunited in the Lord. You know, and I was thinking about redeeming, about this exchange. Remember the times where you had the uh, s and green stamps? I don't know if you remember those days. Or even today, if you get a coupon, we got Myers coupons to go to shopping, and you got all these coupons. And well, I'm taking that coupon and I'm exchanging it, right? I'm trading that coupon in for a certain percentage off or something free. Gift cards, you know, we like gift cards, right? Somebody gets a gift card, well, they're taking that value and they go and they trade it in for a meal or whatever it may be, a side order, a salad, or fries or something. So we redeem that. It's traded in and it has a certain value or exchange rate, if you will. So the basic thing here is that Jesus, right, he provided a redemptual spiritual blessing for his predestined elect, you and I. And he went and took it. We, we would, we, he redeemed, he, we, he exchanged something valuable, us. He redeemed us through his blood. He took it upon himself. The whole payment of sin that we deserved, he took it on us and he made an exchange so that we could live. That's powerful. And there's nothing that I can do on my own to earn it. Thank you, Lord, that I was delivered from that spirit of Pharisee, spirit of religion of mankind that says you must do, do, do. I, no, no, no. He said it is done. It is finished. Religion says do. Jesus said done. 
there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So today, what will you decide? Have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Those watching around the world on this video camera, have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you understood the importance of knowing the Lord and especially Christ knowing you? Now is the time to have a relationship with Him. To understand what sin is. And the only way that we're ever going to make it to the eternal home in heaven is through Jesus and Him alone. Salvation belongs to our Lord God. And only through Him, when we call upon the Lord, we are saved, we confess to Him, and then we receive the gift, and we now we have, have eternal life. And then you know you are God's predestined one. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you that Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Ephesian church, explained this. And Father, thank you, Lord, that we have the same letter for us, his love letter to us that says, we receive these blessings as your chosen of your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord, that we are saints who are chosen by the power of the precious blood and only way through Jesus Christ who provides that redemptive spiritual blessings in our lives. Father, we thank you that you exchanged your body, your blood for us and you went to the cross and paid in full the sin that we deserve. And Father, we thank you for the privilege of knowing that we do have eternal life, 1 John 5, 13. And know that we have a home waiting for us, a mansion in heaven. There'll be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more diabetes, no more headaches, no more, no more cancer, no more heart attacks, no more weak legs. And Father, we're so blessed to know that we will put on perfection one day. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know why we know this? Because he lives. God sent his son. They call.
face tomorrow. Because you live, we know that our faith is not in vain. Faith is real because you give us those faith. You've given and shown you, revealed yourself, and you walked upon this earth, and you went on the cross, paid for our sins, and you rose from the grave, and you ascended into heaven, and you are the one mediator between us and you, Father, in heaven. Father, thank you for this wonderful, precious, amazing grace, and for the gift of redemption that we've been redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, knowing that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, Father. So we thank you, Lord, that we have you. And Father, this week, as we go about our days, and today and through the next week, lead us, Father. Let your Holy Spirit help us to teach us to learn to grow in our, our sanctification as saints of the Most High. We love you, Lord. Bless everyone here today. Bless those who are watching from around the world. We thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Go and serve the Lord, and have a wonderful day. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Before everybody breaks away, if there's any diabetics who are in Levamere, um, Roger's family, when they cleaned out his apartment, um, they gave me his Levamere to pass on to anybody who could use it. It is okay. the, um, it's, it's like the EpiPen where you measure out and just give yourself a shot. You don't have to draw it into the uh, syringe. So.